Hello, my name is Andrew Blair. Hi, my name is Erica. I'm Nisha. What's up? My name is John Riley. And I have no experience with Latin. And not much experience with Latin either. Like the Latin language as in like Spanish. Mm -hmm. I'm really good with common names. I know plants by their nicknames. I have limited experience with plants and have no idea or perception on any form of Latin language. Hey, I'm Alicia. I am a former Latin teacher with eight years of experience. Uh, I have my bachelor's degree in Latin education and also I'm just an all-around linguist. Oh no. <laughs> Can we use this in a sentence, please? Philotene. Philotenium. Philotenium. Philobium? Did I say it right? The genus name is Philotenium. Common name, I feel like this is Xanthosoma. Xanthosoma? I feel like that's harder than the Latin one. So, interestingly enough, uh, the common name for this plant is Xanthosoma. Uh, although the Latin name, or really it's a Greek name, uh, is philatinium. And again, this is a, a combination of a couple of roots here. Uh, you have the Greek pila, which means uh, leaf or leaves, and then uh, tinea, which is actually a tapeworm. Um, but that's kind of a disgusting image that we might not like to think about. Uh, tinea is also an architectural term. So if you ever look at, you know, those Greek or those Roman columns that are kind of going up, uh, you might notice there's this, you know, very small, tiny band kind of running across the top where, where the marble is meeting the top of the column. And so we can kind of see that replicated right in the leaves. We have these just tiny bands, little tiny uh, going throughout it. This one's definitely... <laughs> uh... The classic. Diefenbachia? Diefen... It's not dive, yeah. Diefenbachia. This is Diffenbachia. D. Diffenbachia. This is a variegated Diffenbachia. Diffenbachia? Diffenbachia. It is variegated, right? Most people refer to this as a Diffenbachia. The correct pronunciation is Diffenbachia. Uh, this is named after the head gardener at the Royal Palace Gardens Schönbrunn in Austria. And so he made this discovery in the 1830s while traveling in Brazil. Sounds like a body part. I also don't like this one. Ephrenum? Mm. Epi... Ephrenum? Epipremnum. <laughs> you sure this is Latin? Epipremnum. Epipremnum. Common name... This is a pothos? It's a pothos. This is a pothos? Uh, so the common name for this plant is uh, potos or potos, uh, although really the correct Latin term for this is epipremnum. And so this comes from the Greek root epi, which means upon, and then uh, premnum, which is a tree stump. So you can kind of imagine if you saw this, you know, naturally occurring, uh, that it would actually be growing upon a tree stump. That would be where it would prefer to be growing. Looks like he came from the prehistoric times. Geo, 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 geogen, geogenanthus? Geogenanthus. This one is a geogenanthus. This one I know. This is a geogenanthus. Geogenanthus. So many refer to this as a geo or a geogenanthus. Uh, in fact, this plant, the, the Geogenanthus, was recently featured in the New York Times and really popularized by our very own plant hunter, Mike Rimland. And in fact, um, the roots here are really kind of a combination of, of Latin and Greek roots. You have uh, Geo, which is the earth, and then uh, Gen, which means type or kind or even born. So if you think like genealogy or generic, those are some, some root words that we have with, with the genus root in it. Um, and then anthus, which means flower. So when you put it together, it's um, a flower, right, that is born of the earth or produced from the earth. And so um, just has these lovely, shiny, very earthy looking leaves. I've never seen this plant in my life. I have no idea what this is. Nef Nephrolip Nephrolipus? Nephrolipus? 
Nephrolepis cordifolia. Nephrolepis cordifolia. This is a fern. It's some fern. The common name, maybe judging on what it's looking like, a bush? Also the common name is lemon button fern. Uh, so this is just kind of a type of fern. It's known as the lemon button fern more commonly. Uh, but the Latin term for this is Nephrolepis cordifolia. And so um, really, this is just a combination of a few different descriptors of, of the leaves that we're seeing on this. So uh, you have nephro, which is, is your kidney, uh, and then lepis, which are fish scales. So um, again, maybe not the most attractive image that comes to mind. And so I, I kind of suspect that that's where this kind of second half of it comes from. You know, the corde, which is the heart, and then folia, which are leaves, right? Like foliage. So um, potentially also you could see how these individual leaves almost have like a heart shape to them. Oh man, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a toughie. <sighs> Raphidophora, 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 Ravdiv. Oh, this is too many letters, I'm sorry. Raphidophora, Raphidophora. Raphidophora? I'm gonna go with Raphidophora. Raphidophora? This is the mini monstera, uh, Raphidophora tetrasperma. So this plant is commonly known as the Raphidophora or the Raphidophora. Um, the, the Greek pronunciation or Latin pronunciation is pretty similar. It's rapidophora, so just uh, basically muting that P to kind of give it a softer sound. Uh, this is really just a combination of, of two Greek roots. You have uh, rapis, which is a needle, and then phora, which means bearing. So very literally like needle bearing leaves. I learned I don't know any Latin names and I know very few common names. I don't know anything about plants. <laughs> I feel like I'm a plant expert now. Because I feel like I've already lost all of it. If there's anything to learn from this experience is that I need to know a lot more than I do now. Uh, so just a really important thing to note with these plants is that um, these are not necessarily traditional Latin terms, right? You can kind of see that uh, we've had combinations of different roots borrowed from both Greek and Latin, uh, or even some plants that are, that are named for those who discovered or, or named in homage of others, right? And so um, it's just good to realize that this is more of like a Neo-Latin rather than a, than a classic Latin that you might find in, you know, a traditional Latin dictionary or something. Um, so definitely, you know, this is something that you can make your own. You can call plants whatever you want. They're your plants. Do what your heart desires.